AsReader. Uh, my name is Paul Whitney. I'm with AsReader, and our device is turning a phone into a UHF or HF barcode scanner and or reader writer. So this is the sled here. So what does it do? So this allows you to use an iPhone to read or write EPC chips in tags like this. Which is uh, like RFID, what is that? Exactly, so this is a UHF RFID. We also do is this HF. flexible? Sure, flexible. This particular one here reads moisture. Uh, we also have ones that read temperature. Uh, so you can read temperature at a distance of up to 32 feet. How is so, that possible? So the, uh, the, ch the tag itself is passive, so there's no battery. But what it does is it uses the radio waves to power the tag to read the, ch the data that's in the chip right there, like a grain of sand, very, very small chip, and then it bounces back to the reader. So the radio wave hits this, reads the chip, and then bounces back with the info. So you're talking about 32 feet? Yes. Uh, so this, this version here is able to read at 32 feet. So this is the long-range gun version. So what's going on here? Can you show? Sure, sure. So this is a linear antenna. Uh, this antenna here is a circular antenna. So with this when you read, the radio waves come off it like this in a circle, like you put a pebble into a, a lake. Yeah. Uh, with this, it's linear, so it's shooting it out straight. Now, if you, if you move, you can still read everything in this room, but it reads at a long distance of 10 meters or 32 feet. So it's sending RF power? A radio wave, yes. And mm -hmm. uh, getting the signal back? And then it gets the signal back. Now, with this, you're able to actually pinpoint the location of it. So, for example, you can, you can pinpoint the location of a tag with the exact distance. So this can tell you that you're looking at a tag that's three feet, seven and a half inches to the right and eight feet up. Is this something that works right now? Yes, it does. So can we do a test? Or absolutely, so let's absolutely. Put a tag somewhere. Sure, sure, you got it. All right. So we just have some animation showing how it works. So they have the information on the tag right here. This is a temperature? Yes, that's a temperature tag. So if I put it over there, is it going to work? Right. Uh, temperature, let's see. on. We have different devices. Yeah. Give me just a moment. Let's see. This small one here, here we go. We've got the temperature on here. So let's look at. So here's the temperature tag. We'll turn this on. I'm going to clear the old data, read it. Okay, so it's got these two tags here. And you see the temperatures. I'm going to put my thumb on here to start raising the temperature. And you see how the numbers are changing? See how it's all the way up to 28 degrees Whoa. Celsius now? That's, that's measuring in real time. In exactly. Fast. Yes. How can that happen? Yeah. With a tiny Isn't that chip? awesome? Like, what is this chip? Yes, it's an EPC chip, so it's, it's just... Very, very. Uh, Is it Cortex M0 or nothing to do that? I couldn't. I don't know that actually. Kind of often. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. But these are these are standard Gen 2 tags, and uh, not every reader out there can read the the temperature and moisture, uh, but ours can right out of the box. How far does that one go? Uh, this one's about one to two meters, so about three to six feet, depending on the tag. This is a pretty large tag, so it can go a little farther. Um, there are small tags that are the size of a grain of sand. Got to get pretty close up on those. And what are we looking at over here? Sure. So we've got combo readers that do barcode. So this. This one's 1D, 2D barcode. And part of what's really cool about our device is this. So you see this case is for an iPhone 5, an SE. So you simply take out the case and put it in this larger case here, and now it'll fit an iPad mini. And you also have the technology to uh, uh, charge easily with one of those. Exactly. So this is if you're in the field for 10 hours and you needed to extend the life of your phone, you simply slap on one of these batteries and it can keep going. And then if you want to charge it together, you're actually able to put it on here and then charge the battery, the sled, and the phone all at the same time. Nice. This is awesome. This is uh, it's like a USB, but it's just mm -hmm. more but easy, But without right? the breaking off point, exactly. Yeah. yeah, and that's, you know, everybody finds that those cables are where things tend to break. And, and this allows you to, to connect with magnets 360 degrees. So, and not have something that's going to break off. Have you been doing this for a while? Uh, we have. So our company, uh, the company that makes these readers started 10 years ago in Japan. Uh, these have just been introduced to the U.S. market in the last year. So we're still very new here, but we actually represent 70% of the sled market in Japan. 70% of the what? Of the sled market. So what as, is a sled? Uh, this is a sled. 
So a device that hooks on to a smartphone like this. So uh, some of our biggest users are department stores like Tokyo Hands or uh, Toyota Manufacturing. They use this in the manufacturing process. And it's for iPhone and Android? We do offer Android as well, although we custom make them because there's so many different kinds of Androids. This example here is with a Sharp telephone. Oh, that's um, a good one. Is it the, the bezel-less? Uh, actually, this is just a regular, a regular Sharp, but there's 7,000 di different <laughs> kinds of Android footprints now, yeah. so we actually have to make it to fit the phone. So we take orders of usually a thousand or more units to make the case just for that for that particular device, um, but it can be done. And it can be done either, this one's using the mini USB connection <coughs> off the side of the phone here. Yeah. Um, we have an adapter that can allow it to go off the bottom for like a Samsung, uh, or we can forget the mini USB altogether and use a Bluetooth. But we prefer to try and use hardware so you don't have any of the pairing issues. Is there any chance you might do a more flexible one that could fit mm -hmm. a bunch of different phones and be yes. flexible on the side, you know, it could adjust yeah, somehow? Yeah, exactly. Here's how, here's how the Android works. So you can see inside here we have a sort of an elbow adapter that connects to the mini USB. So with, with iPhone, we, everybody's using a lightning connector. Everything yeah. from the iPod Touch up to the iPad Pro 9.7, right? It all just uses lightning connector. But with Android, you've got mini USBs that either come off the side like this, or sometimes off the bottom. So what we did was make an elbow adapter that we could move around as necessary, and then we make a different case to fit that specific case. All right. So, so a mm -hmm. Asreader is a, is a Japanese company, or? Well, our headquarters is in Japan, uh, but our company is actually located in California. Uh, we're a wholly owned subsidiary, uh, and the company in the U.S. Has, has just been here about a year and a half now, uh, and we're still very new to market in the U.S., but uh, we're getting out there and right. letting people know what we have. So. What kind of price are we talking about? Sure. So the barcode-only version is $4.99. And then the 2D barcode is 719, uh, and then the RFID only is 999, uh, like this one here. And then the combo, so this is a combo of 1D, 2D barcode, as well as a UHF RFID. This is 1199, and then for 1299, we're able to go up to this uh, 10 meter range, 32 foot. So for this 1299, you can now and you could walk around and just uh, oh, yeah. read a whole bunch of stuff. Oh yes, yes, very <laughs> quickly, thousands instantly. It's and what's very the best fast. use for that? Where would you go? Well, you know, um, asset tracking is really one of the biggest uses. Obviously, um, there's a lot of different things in the in the medical industry as well as in retail where people need to keep track of items. Um, for now, you know, tags have been expensive in the past, so for a long time it was only tracking expensive assets, but now that the price of tags is getting under five cents each, you know, it can be used for even checking your, your inventory daily. So if you have a tag on everything in the store, actually we have some use cases on our website that you can check out, but there's a retailer who used to start every morning by going around the store and, and reading, reading every barcode. So they would take every item off the shelf, read the barcode, and put it back up. They, they take half hour, 45 minutes every morning to do the entire store. Um, now in the morning they get in, they just wave it around and they're done in a matter of minutes. Just a couple minutes, they've read the whole store. The whole store. There's a few, you won't be reading all of them. There's a few mistakes, right? Yeah, it, there can be. Here's the reasons why you have mistakes. So for example, if you have tags that are, like if you had two blouses, usually there's a little space. But if they were right up against each other and you got the tags right on top of each other like that, that could be hard to read. Um, not impossible, but it can be hard. Um, what they'll do in that case is they call it fluffing. So go by and they'll just kind of fluff, fluff the, the blouses or, or whatever's on the hangers and then read again. So when you find something missing, one of the things that people often do is they'll look at the data of where the last place it was seen. So this red size medium blouse was last seen in changing room number four, for example. Then they'll go there and look first to see if it isn't there. Or then they'll look at the places it should be. If it's not there, then they assume perhaps it was stolen or it's misplaced, those kinds of things. It goes through clothing, no problem? Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, yeah, through clothing's no problem. Uh, the weaknesses of RFID are metal and liquid. So if you were trying to read a tag that's behind me, you wouldn't be able to read it. But under this wooden table, no problem. So and plastic, like wood, store, yes. Like of, uh, apparel, this is perfect, yes, right? it is, it is. Now of course, doing that they are, there are. There's quite a few stores doing it. Um, 
you can also use that weakness as a strength. So for example, it can't read through metal. So if you had a rack of shoes, for example, and you had shoes on this side and shoes on that side, and you didn't want to read both, you would put a screen in the middle of the rack, and now you'd only read the shoes on this side and not read what's on the other side because you put a metal screen in there. So it's, it's very easy to use that as a way to, to kind of harness the power that you're, uh, that you're using of RFID. All right, that's cool. Yeah. So, uh, oh, I and should here show you this the, the, uh, printed, uh, I think it's printed electronics. Mm -hmm. uh, I guess you're talking about temperature, you're talking yes. about... Uh, they, they, Maybe some of these companies are making new sensors. Absolutely. Like, yes. What, what, could it be, what could it be? Oh, goodness. Uh, you know, honestly, I haven't had a chance to tour the whole show yet, but there's there's so many out there, so many possibilities. I mean, with the with the moisture, uh, one of the uses in, in healthcare right now is, for example, checking uh, adult diapers in dementia patients. So say, for example, you had a dementia patient who's uh, aggravated and uh, they say they need to be changed. Uh, you can now you can check at a distance rather than having to get up close and check and see if it's wet or not. You can check from several feet away without being in range, if you will. Um, so that's a, a really good use of moisture uh, checking. Um, also, Mercedes-Benz is using it in their in their manufacturing process. So they'll put one of these tags inside the door before they do the final weld on closing up the door. Uh, to make sure there's no moisture in there, because that was one of the main reasons cars were coming back. So they'll uh, they'll put it inside, check it. If it's moisture-free, they'll seal it up. If there's still moisture, they'll dry it out first. So all kinds of different great uses of these sensors for sure. So 